Hi guys, I'm Marilyn Taylor of MarilynTaylor.com and I am a DIY design coach. I am here to help you DIY your project like a pro. Today, we are going to talk about how to fix a tear in an oil painting and it's a lot easier than you think it's gonna be. Here we go. Let's get action. Here is the painting that we will be working on. And if you look closely, you can see the tears, but let's look a little bit closer up. And you can see that there's one in the green horizontally and one that is vertical up in the white snow. So here are the items that you are going to want to have for this project. You're gonna want various colors or various shades of paint so that you can custom match uh, the painting on the front where you are fixing this tear. And then you're going to want a piece of canvas. I just go to the 99 cent store and I pick up their dollar canvases and I just cut pieces of canvas off for this purpose. And then you're going to want probably a small little paintbrush and a larger one like you see here and some scissors and I think that about wraps it up for supplies. Okay, so moving forward, you're gonna flip it over first. You can see the two tears that are on the back side. So the next step is to cut out pieces big enough or a piece big enough from the dollar store canvas to cover the holes. Okay, so this one is for here, this one is for here, and I may adjust that piece, that's why I left that hanging off. I'm not sure which side I'm going to do. The other thing we want to pay attention to is the fact that this is very dusty. So I am going to go and get a vacuum and clean up this dust because we don't want that getting into the paint when we repair these holes. The other issue that you want to think about when you are repairing a canvas is see how it's pliable. I'm going to put something under here that is going to support it so that when I'm working, it's nice and solid um, so that I can work on these fibers and, um, and not have it you know, pulling apart as I'm pressing on it. So that's also very important. I'm probably gonna start with this canvas underneath and build it up if I need to with magazines or something until it's supporting this ripped canvas. Okay, so I am starting on this one that had the green and the brown. And I'm using a small artist brush, one quarter Princeton angle shaper. I'm going to start working on this one. And if we remember, this was a cream part of, I think, the clouds. So I'm realizing my paint is too bright. So what I'm going to do is take the teeny weeniest bit of this brown and mix it in with the white to make it more of a cream color so that if it does happen to bleed through, it's more likely to match the cream paint on the other side. Okay, so now that I have gotten the paint fairly close in color, I am now very carefully going around the fibers. You can see I've already filled in all around it and now I'm going in and just trying to coat the fibers really fairly lightly because I don't want it to squeeze through. Okay, and you can see that this hole is a little bit different than the other one because this one is kind of puckered. And so I'm gonna need to try to smooth this out. Okay, now keep in mind this is no professional job. A professional would take hours and hours and hours piecing these little tiny fibers all back together. I'm not down that. I don't got time. Okay, so I'm going to make sure this is nice and wet. I'm going to coat my other piece just a little bit as well. I'm actually just mixing up a little tiny bit more. Okay, I'm going to coat this piece and then I'm going to place it on top of here. Okay, so now you can see that I am going to go ahead and try to piece these together and I'm taking my X-Acto knife and trying to flatten this 
as much as I possibly can. I want this little fiber to try to lay down as flat as it can so that as I put these pieces together, it's gonna lay as flat as it possibly can. Now it's okay if these pieces are kind of sticking up. I can always go and trim them afterwards, okay? So I'm just letting it, just gonna make sure that I get it nice and smooth. And then I'm going to flip this over and check the other side. Okay, so that just went very, very well. Because I am literally searching for where the rip was and I'm struggling to find it. I think it's right here. On this part, I'm not gonna have to do any additional work to hide that tear. This is why it's so important to match the paint with the new paint that you're putting on the patch so that if it comes through, you literally can't see it. I mean, that worked out really great. I'm kind of proud of myself right there. Okay, so let's talk about color matching really quick. So you can see that this is way more of a Kelly green. I mean, this color is in here, but not in this section. So now I'm not gonna worry about perfectly matching the brown and the dark green and this. So what I wanna do is decide what color is there most of in this rip? And then that's the color that I wanna match. So if I'm looking at this, this dark green, this bluish green is what, actually, no, I lied. I think I'm better off going with this lighter color green. So that's what I'm gonna to try to match because I can always go back in with the darker after it's harder to go lighter. So that's what I'm going to match. So you can see over here, that I've got some of this light green and blue and black, and I'm going to play with these colors until I find a match. So I think I'm fairly close. If I'm holding this brush close to here, keep in mind, it's going to dry darker as well. So um, I really just took this color green and mixed some of the white in with it. I don't even know that I'm gonna need the blue and the black just yet. Okay, so you can see my first round of color was too dark, although that's dried, so it went quite a bit darker. And I'm just finishing up getting these fibers coated very lightly. I don't want them too heavily coated so that it doesn't squeeze through. Okay, just covering this with paint. And then I've already covered this with paint, but I'm going to give it a fresh coat so that it's nice and wet so that it sticks. And I want to make sure I don't have any paint that's going to squeeze through, so we don't want any excess paint. Okay, now I'm going to take this and get a better angle here. Okay, and I'm going to apply it like this. And note, I'm always going um, parallel with the length of the rip. Okay, so never this way, always this way. Okay, so now that I've got it on there, right, I tucked all the fibers underneath. I couldn't film while I was doing it because I couldn't get a good angle without holding the phone. But now I'm smoothing it down really, really well. And then let's flip it over and see what we are working with. So that's what we ended with. So you can see this side is gonna be a little bit more challenging, but that's okay. And um, so now I'm just gonna to have to go in here and work with a little bit of artist skills and um, try to match those colors and blend this in. Now that we have both of these color matched and the patches are on, we need to let them dry but they can't just dry like this. I need to add some really good heavy weight. I decided to put some parchment paper or just wax paper down first, just so that I can make sure that um, whatever I put on top of it doesn't stick to those patches. And then of course we had to give it some Harry Potter magic and some nice little 
book ends that made it really good and heavy. And then I'm just gonna leave it here for about two hours. I have completed, it dried, it finished drying, and I turned it over. And I ended up, you can kind of see, sorry, I'm trying to get it to focus, there we go. You can still see if you look closely where the tear was on this side still really really hard to see where it was there but if we go further away from it you can unless you know where it is and you're looking for it I did the test I had my husband look and he could not find the rip it is all fixed yay and if I wanted to be super 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 stickler about it I would you know it's still actually drying right now but I would, you know, be even more anal about it, but I'm not going to be because nobody is ever going to know. If you liked this video, then you probably will also like my video, How to Hang an Art Wall. You know those gorgeous art walls with lots and lots of pieces of art, but it seems too overwhelming to hang? I teach you how to do that too. Go check it out. The link is in the description to this video. That's it for today, but be sure to come back week after week. And if you haven't yet, click the link below and sign up for my email list or to shop my vintage finds. See you soon.